Bonjour, aloha. Welcome to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Caitlin, and today I'm going to get you started on a tour of a very exciting field of study known as second language acquisition. In this series, we talk about the science behind second language learning. We'll cover what we know about how people learn languages and what we don't know. If you're watching this video, you probably want to learn more about how people learn languages. Maybe you're a language teacher looking for ways to better understand why your students are struggling. Or maybe you're a learner who wants to know how your brain can manage multiple languages. Or maybe you're simply just someone who can't get enough of languages and linguistics. I get it. I am or have at one point been all of those things. So if you are too, this series is for you. In this video, we're going to cover the basics. What is second language acquisition and why does it matter? Before we get started, let me give you a little background about who I am. My name is Caitlin Tagarelli. I'm a linguist and the head of research at Mango Languages. I have a PhD in linguistics and I've spent the past decade or so researching how the mind and brain learn languages. I also have lots of practical experience learning and teaching languages, both in the US and abroad. So I am so excited to be chatting with you about language learning. Languages are incredibly complex. Just think about that for a minute. What are you learning when you learn a new language? Thousands of words, rules for how you put those words together, an entirely new sound system, idioms, rules for when it's appropriate to say what, cultural competence. It's a lot. And we know that people all over the world learn languages in many different contexts for many different reasons and with a very wide range of success. We probably all have that one friend who seems to pick up languages effortlessly while we may struggle to get past basic vocabulary and greetings. To understand more about how people learn languages, we can turn to second language acquisition. So that brings us to our first question. What is second language acquisition? Let's start with the short answer. Linguistics is a scientific study of language. Second language acquisition, or SLA, if you wanna sound like you're in the know, is the subfield of linguistics that focuses on the learning and teaching of second languages. Now, that second language part can be a little misleading because actually SLA involves the study of any language that's learned after your first language. So that could be your second language, but it could also be your third, fourth, fifth, 15th, and so on. A first language, on the other hand, is learned in the first few years of life. First language learning does not fall under the umbrella of SLA. First language acquisition, also called child language acquisition, is a distinct field of study. Now, of course, there's a lot of overlap there, and we'll talk more about the similarities and differences between first and second language acquisition in an upcoming video. But for now, let's just stick to SLA. Serious efforts to study second language learning emerged in the mid-1900s, when researchers were starting to look at how insights from psychology, theoretical linguistics, and first language acquisition could inform our understanding of how adults learned additional languages and how this could apply to language teaching. By the 1980s, SLA was really being established as a field in its own right. This is when early and influential theories about second language learning started to take hold. These theories considered how second language development was affected by things like innate grammatical knowledge, interaction with other speakers, and social factors. They paved the way for an explosion of research that has flourished to this day, intersecting with a wide range of scientific fields, including anthropology, sociology, cognitive science, neuroscience, and education. Today, there are many academic journals that specifically focus on SLA and millions of books and academic articles on the subject. In fact, a Google Scholar search for academic publications on second language acquisition returns nearly 4 million hits. SLA even has its own subfields. Generally, these are divided into two main strands, an applied strand that focuses on how to make language learning and teaching more effective, and a pure research strand that focuses on understanding the human ability to learn languages. At the beginning of this video, I told you that we cover what second language acquisition is and why it matters. Now that we've defined SLA, the field of study concerned with the learning and teaching of second and subsequent languages, it's time to explore that second part, why it matters. Well, it turns out that understanding second language learning has a whole bunch of real world implications. For today, let's focus on five main examples. The first one may sound obvious, but SLA is important for education. 
teaching programs, textbooks, curriculum designs, and even the activities in your language classrooms are often informed by SLA research. Beyond the classroom, people learn languages at all ages in a variety of contexts for a number of different reasons, and they all come at it with different strengths and weaknesses. SLA research seeks to understand how all of these different factors and more influence language learning. Number two, SLA is important for public policy. In many countries, immigrants make up a large number of second language learners. SLA research can inform policies about how and when to educate these newcomers in the local language while maintaining their home languages. Number three, SLA is important for national security and diplomacy. The Department of Defense is actually one of the biggest funders of SLA research. They need to identify talented language learners who can quickly learn to communicate with the diplomats and locals all over the world. Oh, and they're probably training spies. Number four, SLA is important for the economy. More and more jobs are requiring proficiency in another language. And learning a second language can make you a more competitive candidate. And that brings us to number five. There are so many real world applications of SLA, more than we can touch on in one video. But perhaps the most important application of SLA is its role in cross-cultural understanding. SLA research shows us that learning new languages makes us more open to other cultures and broadens our worldview. Sign me up. Over the past few decades, SLA research has attempted to answer a huge variety of questions like, does age affect language learning? Are some languages harder to learn than others? Why is it so hard to lose your foreign accent? How does speaking a second language affect your identity? How does the brain process second languages? Does learning a second language improve your tolerance of other cultures? And many, many more. But there's still a lot we don't know about second language learning, and SLA researchers are hard at work trying to give us those answers. Before we wrap up our tour of second language acquisition, let's review what we've learned. In this video, we answered two big questions. What is SLA and why does it matter? We learned that second language acquisition or SLA is a subfield of linguistics that focuses on the learning and teaching of second languages or languages learned after your first language beyond the first few years of life. And it is relevant to so many areas of our everyday lives. In other videos in this series, I'll walk you through the science behind language learning and tell you about what SLA researchers have discovered and what open questions remain. I hope you'll stick with me and geek out together about language learning. If you'd like some free goodies related to what SLA is and why it matters, check out the materials we've curated for you and linked in the description. If you want to stay in the loop about all of our amazing videos on languages and linguistics, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Aloha, au revoir et à bientôt.